Hi, I'm Lawson. So in case you've been living under a rock, recently AI has just burst onto the scene and is really good at creating images from text prompts. So as a photographer and filmmaker, you'd think I'd be terrified of losing my job to our new robot overlord. So as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. So that's why I'm gonna see if it's possible to use AI to eliminate the need to ever take a self portrait of me or maybe even anyone else ever again. And to do that, I'm gonna use this, a blue screen and a studio setup. So first things first, how does an AI actually take nothing and turn it into something? And more specifically, a portrait, like a really detailed portrait, like these. How does little thinky rock go from code in the 80s to portrait in 40 years of someone from nothing? This is space magic only known by a few nerds. So today I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what that space magic actually is. So an AI fundamentally needs three things to generate an image. Firstly, you need a dataset, a training model on said dataset, and then a prompt. And then presto, you got a new image, which is terrifyingly accurate. So first things first, we actually need that training material to actually get started. And training material in question is me. So to create a data set of myself, basically the AI needs to see me in different clothes, lighting conditions, contexts, and facial expressions so it can get like a broad overview of what I look like. So I'm going to use the blue screen to cut myself out and put me in different locations anywhere. And the lighting is also going to change because I can move them. So now I guess it's time for me to go and take all these photos and find out how it all goes. And if this blue screen method actually works or if it's a huge waste of time. So gathering the data was pretty straightforward. So right here, I'm just going through modeling all the different clothes, switching up the lights and just getting a bunch of different shots of me in different lighting contexts, clothing and just facial expressions. So you see me doing a lot of weird shit, like smiling, laughing, looking concerned, fearful, scrunching up my face and looking around a bunch to get a bunch of different angles. Because the software needs a lot of different data. Then it was onto the editing, which is pretty straightforward. Color correct, cut myself out in the background, remove any blemishes and logos so I don't want to be reproduced in the final AI output and making sure I was cutting out each individual one and putting it into a context relevant background so the lighting somewhat matches. And then just rinse and repeat. This whole process took only about an hour or so and you can see it was also pretty easy using Adobe's AI subject selection tool, especially for the hair, which is historically quite difficult to key out in Photoshop or cut out, but once again, AI is coming to save the day. So now I got all the photos edited. That's all my data set completed. So now that I've got the actual data set, which is the study material, it's time for our little AI buddy to hit the books. Just learn, learn. So the AI is going to learn my face, my vibe, my style. It's going to learn everything. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a web-based application called Runway ML. Now, Runway ML is really cool because it can actually train models for you. You don't have to do it locally. As an avid gamer, I don't want it chewing up my precious GPU. I'm busy. I'm playing Warzone, baby. Let's go. I'm getting these done. I can't have this. It's only a few dollars to train a model because it is actually quite power intensive and takes a lot of GPU and computing power. So now it's uploaded to Runway ML. I can just let it run in the background do its thing, I can use my computer and it all runs on the cloud system. So now all the blue screen images have been cropped, cut out, and now uploaded to run my ML. It's time to actually just run the training program. So now that you've trained your model, the first things first, it will just spit you out 100 base images like these. So this is just to give you a good idea of how well the models actually learned. So with that being said, these are the 100 base images I got from the 20 sample images I gave it. So a lot of them were kind of just weird. A lot of them I feel were overrepresented in the masculinity. My face was a bit more wide, it was too thick, it just didn't really look like me. But that being said, there was a few that I did think looked quite good. For example, me as a doctor, me in some painting that looks kind of like Westeros, and then stuff like me as a stormtrooper, me as some anime style painting, me in some LA sun-drenched sort of street with palm trees in the background. So now that I have the base images, I can see that it's clearly working in some capacity. So now I can do text to images. So upon first glance, these aren't very good at all. These are kind of shit. My face is all kind of warped and mushy. Everything kind of looks wrong. The body proportions all wrong. The face especially is just completely non-existent in some of these, if not most. And for the most part, it's kind of a failure. It doesn't work. So that being said, with these not really working, I think it may come down to the lack of data that I provided the system in the first place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna give it 10 more images. I'm gonna up the data set by 50%, which is 
nothing to shake a stick at in terms of percentages. So now I have my 10 extra images. That brings my base set from 20 all the way up to 30. So for this model, I just called it Lawson 2 because I'm uncreative and boring and trying to see if this is just gonna work in general. So now it's done, it's gonna spit out 100 new images. So off rip, the 100 base images are already looking a whole lot better than the first iteration. I was right, with more images, you get better results. So here, for example, one is me of a doctor in some neon cityscape. Me is a stormtrooper again, painterly portrait of me. Another selfie of me in LA. But I think these two here look eerily similar to me in real life. I didn't take these photos. No one's taken these, but they look so real and vivid. So with that being said, I think it's time to put in some text prompts and see if we can get any interesting images out of this. So first things first, I'm nerdy and I want to test some things. So I've typed in me in the style of Attack on Titan and we get these interesting results. Not exactly the best, not exactly the worst, but it's definitely the style and it's definitely me, which is really cool that it can blend the two together. We got stuff like me in the style of cyberpunk, me in a field at sunset on a hike, stuff like me taking a selfie. A lot of these, like me looking out the window, me in an office interview style shot, me seeing a computer doing office stock things and businessman stuff. At a quick glance, they definitely look like those sort of stock photography images you would expect to see a business using to promote their business. It may not be a perfect amount of detail and be 100% photorealistic, but it's a damn good base point just for a quick glance to look at and be like, hey, that's the thing I was thinking of. I believe something like this would be very useful for someone who's doing animatics, someone who's doing concept art. If you can just type in what you want and then just keep breeding images over and over again until you get something that looks close enough for chuck in a lookbook or a mood board, as long as it gets the idea across, that's good enough. I think in maybe one to two years when this technology has flowered a bit more, there could be some serious implications for some new work to be done and some new ways that different industries and different people can actually use a tool like this to get stuff done that they just simply wouldn't have the time or energy for. At the moment, it's a bit more of a parlor trick and definitely interesting and fun, but I reckon in maybe a year or two, this could be a serious tool for creating content that you may not be able to have access to. This is what I see could be a possibility in the future. Maybe there's a company that wants to get headshots for everyone and put them in different places around the company and just get a bunch of brand photos. But say they don't have the time or resources to reschedule everyone around that and it may be too costly. So instead they hire you to come in with a rollout green screen, a camera and a bunch of lights. That person sits down and then you just quickly burst out a bunch of photos in a couple of minutes and then off they go and in comes the next person. Then take all these photos, upload them to your AI of choice, it studies and models each one of their faces, and then you can just type in employee Derek outside sitting at a cafe, smiling next to Angela, having a good time. Spits out Derek sitting next to Angela, having a good time. They both look very beautiful, pretty, and well lit, and you didn't have to do any of that. Then the company can just chuck it up on a social media page or even around the office, and then boom, they have content to fill the things they need that they didn't actually have time for. So that's what I could see could be a potential real world use case for something like this. And this can still give jobs to photographers and not take it away. Maybe it's just bringing the barrier of entry for clients down. Maybe it's a whole new industry altogether. Who knows? I guess it's more of a wait and see and find out. But for the time being, I think this is really cool. And this is really interesting. And I'm excited to even play around with this technology. So much like everything, this technology has pros and cons to it. So firstly, the pros. It's cheap, quick and easy ish to use. Massive time saver for stuff like background images, concept work, and just general communication of ideas. Allows for fast adaptations and experimentation with images. Can convincingly reproduce real photos of a specific subject. And finally, brings down the barrier of entry to anyone, regardless of tool set, skill, or even experience. And now for the cons. Literally all the pros, but cons. It's stealing my job and it's not very nice. It's actually quite tedious to use and suffers a lack of finer control over prompts, meaning getting a usable image often takes a very long time and forcing prompts until it magically spits out one of the actual usable bits of media. As a tool, it's very unreliable and finicky, has a high upfront time sink, it can be a crunch for lack of skill or creativity, and finally, it definitely needs some more time in the oven before it can be properly considered as an actual piece of equipment on your tool belt. But knowing AI, this will probably be solved very quickly. So overall, it's a great tool that allows a lot of new possibilities. However, in its current state, it's a bit more of a niche interesting use case because it broadens your skill set, but definitely doesn't deepen it. So if all that being said, what does it hold for us photographers in the future? At the end of the day, AI is a really powerful tool. 
orders of magnitude more powerful than we've ever had access to. So as a creative, if you're truly scared of losing your job, I don't think it's going to happen. Your job may definitely change and you should be prepared for that. So don't be scared. If anything, be the change you want to see. Grab these tools and steer them in the direction that you want to take them. Don't let anyone else decide what this industry is going to be for us. Decide for you. Grab these tools and use them to make your job more worthwhile. Make sure that you are more empowered to create the things that you want to create. Have a good rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you had some fun. You can follow me here on Instagram. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. Anyway, I've been Lawson, you've been watching, and thank you very much. Goodbye.